What's up guys? This is Manoj Shukhtani. I welcome you all on behalf of the AD Video world. This is going to be the third and the last video presentation relating to the concept of mergers and acquisitions in which I'm going to discuss with you some of the relevant remaining questions which have already been asked in CA final examination. So by now I do hope and I certainly believe that you guys have already revised whatever stuff I have already made you understand in my last presentations. So this is going to be the last video presentation for voices and acquisition and this is going to be the last video presentation for SFM syllabus as well because after this topic nothing is left. I've already covered the entire syllabus with you guys for you guys. So this was the last awaited presentation which was pending from my end. So here it goes. So the first question for CU final examination was the relevant financial details of two firms just prior to a merger announcement are as follows. This has been segregated into three columns, Particulars, Amit Limited and Bakshi Limited. These are the two companies. The first one, the first row is with market price per share. Market price per share for Amit Limited is rupees 65. For Bakshi Limited, it's rupees 30. The number of outstanding shares for Amit Limited is 0 0.8 million and for Bakshi Limited, it's 0 0.5 million. The market price per share for Amit Limited is 5 crore 20 lakh. For Bakshi Limited, it's rupees 1.5 crores. So that's not market price per share. Basically, that's the valuation stuff, guys. The complete market valuation for Amit Limited and Bakshi Limited. Okay, 5 crore 20 lakh for Amit Limited and 1 crore 50 lakh for Bakshi Limited. I don't know this question has been like directly taken up from the C final examination paper. So there was a typo error in the question itself. So it says the merger is expected to bring gains which have a present value of 1 crore 20 lakh. Amit Limited offers 2,46,000 shares in exchange of 5 lakh shares of shareholders of Bakshi Limited. Bakshi Limited are having the share outstanding which is 5 lakh and in consideration of these 5 lakh shares, Amit Limited have agreed to offer them 2,40,000 shares. Okay, Assuming that the market values of the two firms just before the merger announcement are equal to their present values as separate, we are supposed to calculate the NPV for Amit Limited and Bakshi Limited respectively. So guys, this question is a bit different from the regular question which are usually asked in the CE final examination as far as the topic of mergers and acquisition is concerned. This question is a bit different and here you'll get some good ideas, okay? Here and you'll get some new knowledge in order to grab this concept and do your solution, okay? So guys, here they are saying basically that in consideration of your 5 lakh shares, they'll provide you only 2,46,000 shares, okay. Now, since they are providing you 2,46,000 of themselves, okay, what is going to happen is the value which is being paid would be 2,40,000 multiplied by the share price, the share price for which Amit Limited, that is the share price of Amit Limited, which is 65. So you will get 2,46,000 shares of Amit Limited, the price of per share of Amit Limited is 65 and it is being said that you are losing onto your value, which is this. So since you are getting into a merger, okay, what you are losing up over here as your own entity's value, which is this 1,50,000. Okay. That is your valuation basically. So for 1 guru 50 lakh, this is being subtracted from what you are about to get, which is 2,46,000 multiplied by 65. You will be getting 1 guru 59,90,000. And you will have to leave 1 crore 50 lakh for it. So you are still into a net gain of 9 lakh 90,000. So the cost which overall in totality looks up, okay, for the cost of acquiring the Bakshi Limited share, that's only rupees 9 lakh 90,000, okay. That is what it's being seen as overall, okay. But what is going to be the true cost when the shareholder of Bakshi Limited gets a fraction of share capital of the combined entity value since we all are aware of this fact that after the merger is happened okay after the completion of merger you as an entity okay you get some portion of it okay you don't get the entire portion because you are getting merged into another entity which was already having a larger share in their hand so what would be the share of bakshi limited in the combined entity we'll have to first get that in order to get the true cost of this merger okay 
the apparent cost is just like like ninety thousand. Okay, but is it the real cost that that is going to be like happening up in this particular case? No, that's certainly not the case. So what's going to be the true cost that will only and only be calculated once you get the share of Bakshi Limited in the combined entity? So that is alpha. Okay, so you are getting the shares which are two lakh forty thousand. Okay. And what would be the number of shares after you get two lakh forty thousand? So the earlier shares for Amit Limited was eight lakh. Post merger, it will become ten lakh forty six thousand because two lakh forty six thousand will be like added to its total tally. So your share, which is Bakshi Limited share, is only two lakh forty six thousand. That has to be divided by ten lakh forty six thousand, which becomes the overall shares. So you get your share as only zero point two three five. Okay. That is the share of Bakshi Limited in the combined entity, zero point two three five. So now, if in case you want to calculate the cost of the complete entity post merger, you'll have to use this concept, which is cost will be equal to your share multiplied by the present value of both the companies. Okay. Now, since you are adding up your earnings to that merged entity, that merged entity is already adding up their old earnings. Plus, you'll get some benefit also, which was. One crore twenty lakh, which was available in the question itself, that this is expected to bring out the gains of one crore twenty lakh. So here are the synergy gains as well. So this would be the present value of the A B entity. Out of the same, you'll subtract the present value of the B entity, which is the Bakshi, Bakshi Limited. Bakshi Limited's overall present value as a alone separate entity would have to be uh, subtracted from this one, which is the overall complete combined value of both the entities. So what is the overall combined entity value which is pv of amit limited plus pv of bakshi limited plus benefit so which is 520 lakhs which is here available in this question 520 lakhs plus 150 lakhs plus 120 lakhs so 520 lakhs plus 150 lakhs plus 120 lakhs it comes out to be rupees 790 lakhs okay this is the present value of the ab entity which is amit plus bakshi okay Now seven ninety is that figure, okay? Out of the seven ninety, what is the proportion for Bakshi Limited? That has to be multiplied with two three five. Seven ninety multiplied by two three five, you'll get a value, okay, which is only available to Bakshi Limited, which will go in the pockets of Bakshi Limited shareholder. Subtract one lakh fifty, which was their present value of as a alone entity, which was one crore fifty lakh, okay, the separate. Value for Bakshi Limited. Okay, so they got an overall benefit of thirty six lakh over it. Okay, guys, it comes out to be a figure of one crore eighty six lakhs. Okay, one eighty six lakhs. Subtract one fifty lakh out of the same, you'll get thirty six lakh approx. So that is the cost which you'll have to pay to Bakshi Limited out of the overall entity's value. Okay, so since you are paying this thirty six lakh, okay. You got an overall benefit as a Amit Limited shareholder. You get an overall benefit of one twenty lakhs. Okay, out of this one twenty lakh, thirty six lakh is being paid to the shareholders of Bakshi Limited. So what is left with Amit Limited? Amit Limited's NPV would be the benefit minus cost, which comes out to be one twenty minus thirty six, which is eighty four lakhs. Eighty four lakhs is the amount which will be the NPV for Amit Limited, and the NPV for Bakshi Limited will be the cost to Amit Limited, which is thirty six lakh, which we just calculated. Isn't this question a bit different from the other ones? Very different. Now, if you'll compare it with the apparent cost, the apparent cost for acquiring Bakshi Limited was merely nine lakh ninety thousand. But is it the real case? No. You'll have to shed out of your pocket thirty six lakh because this one twenty lakhs benefit is also concerned with this, which was not highlighted in this one. We just highlighted the amount which we are paying them up. And we just subtracted the benefit which we'll get once we we'll add this particular entity to ourselves. Okay, we just calculated their present value separately, but we didn't expected this thing to come under in apparent cost calculation. But the true cost was thirty six lakh and not nine lakh ninety thousand. Clear, guys? Sorted with this one. Wonderful. Let's go ahead with the last question of this presentation and the last question for the final syllabus. This question was asked in November two thousand and thirteen. It says Trupti Company Limited promoted by a multinational group, International INC, is listed on a stock exchange holding eighty four percent, that is sixty three lakh shares. Profit after tax would be rupees four point eight zero crores. Free float market capitalization comes out to be rupees nineteen point two zero. Now, guys, let's stay here only. We won't move. 
because this question is a bit technical and i really want you to understand this question here itself okay for a better understanding clarity as far as the initial beginning is concerned so guys they are saying that it is this this group is uh, this company is being promoted by the multinational group okay and they are already holding 84 percent so the group is already promoted the company is already promoted by a single group and the group is already holding 84 percent of its holding so what is the remaining part which is available to the general public it's only 16 percent 100 minus 84 it's only 16 percent which is with general public so now 84 percent constitutes for 63 lakh so what will be the 100 percent 63 into 100 divided by 84 simple guys which comes out to be 75 lakh 75 lakhs is the total number of shares out of which 63 is with the promoters group simple so what is the balance the amount of share which is available with general public it's only 75 minus 63 which comes out to be 12 12 lakh is the number of shares which is available with public so now profit after tax is 4.80 okay and they are saying the free float market capitalization is 19.20 free float market capitalization means guys the one which is not available with the promoters but with the shareholders so simple free float that means simply the shares which can freely float in the market so is this 84 percent can freely float in the market no that is available with promoters they are holding it up so only that 16 percent will constitute to be the free float market capitalization clear guys this is something which i wanted to make you understand before heading towards the solution part now it says as per the SEBI guidelines promoters have to restrict their holding to 75 percent they are already having 84 percent but as per the SEBI guidelines they'll have to restrict their holding to 75 okay so now how it will be done i will let you know to avoid delisting from the stock exchange the board of directors have decided not to delist the share but to comply with the SEBI guidelines by issuing the bonus shares okay so guys they have decided to issue the bonus shares to the minority shareholders okay so that 16 percent public okay they'll get some amount of bonus shares so that they can reduce their overall holding to 75 percent okay while maintaining the same pe ratio we are supposed to find out first the pe ratio then what amount of bonus ratio we in which we need to provide them the bonus shares then market price of shares before and after the bonus issue lastly free float market capitalization of the company after the bonus shares this is the question which was asked in CA panel examination for november 2013 without a delay i'll just make you understand what this question is all about so guys i just made you aware with free float term which is available to the general public so total holding minus promoters holding so free float holding is 16 percent in this problem we have noticed that the promoters holding is 84 percent which is 63 lakh number of shares so the total share holding will become just the thing which i made you understand in the question itself which will be 63 lakh divided by 0 0.84 which comes out to be your 75 lakh shares so the free float of 16 percent in this 75 would come out to be what that is 12 lakh shares this thing i just made you understand in the question itself this part now comes to the question core question what would be the profit after tax that is 4.8 crores mentioned to us in the question correct so the earning per share would become what that is the earning 4.8 divided by the number of shares number of shares is 75 so 4.8 crores divided by 75 lakh it comes out to be rupees 6.4 so rupees 6.4 is your eps so the current pe if in case the current eps is 6.4 the current pe will become 160 divided by 6.4 and how do i get to this 160 it's very simple guys in this question itself I've just made you understand here. Okay. So this 160 will be from this 19.2. Okay. 19.2 is the market capitalization, which was available to us in the question itself. That is free flow market capitalization. That is 19.2. I'll have to divide it with 12. Okay. And how do I get this 12? That is from this one. So 12 is the market capitalization, which is free float free float is 19.2 crores which is available only to general public so that has to be divided with the number of shares which is holded up by only general public which is 12 lakh so 19.2 crores divided by 12 lakh you get a figure of 160 so 160 is your market price per share clear guys sorted with this one rupees 160 divided by rupees 6.4 which is the eps so your current pe comes out to be 25 times so you don't need to worry about how do we get this 160 it's very simple 19.20 is your free float divide the same with the number of shares which is 
held by the uh, general public which is 12 lakh so 160 divided by 6.4 it comes out to be 25 times so this is your current PE now what is the target which has been provided to us from the government we need to bring down the promoter holding from 84 to 75 percent now that 84 percent is because of the current promoter share worth 63 lakh 63 lakh is the number of shares constituting 84 percent okay we are supposed to reduce it to 75 percent so what do we need to do we just simply need to divide the 63 lakh with 75 okay so we'll get that what is the maximum amount of shares that you need to have in your overall platter for your balance sheet okay so that your overall promoter holding comes out to be 75 percent so this 75 percent will only happen if in case your overall shares will become 84 which is just the mathematic calculation 63 is the number of shares which are held by promoter their overall size should be only 75 so what should be the overall total size inclusive of free float holding that will become 84 lakh simple guys so out of this 84 if 63 is available with the promoter what balance should come up with the free float market holding so that will be this so additional 9 lakh shares would have to be issued as bonus shares because they are already having 12 lakh shares 84 minus 63 it comes out to be 21 you are already having 12 so what balance remains to be issued it's 9 lakh so additional 9 lakh shares would have to be issued as bonus shares in the ratio for what so they are holding 12 lakh they need 9 lakh as bonus shares so that has to be divided in the ratio of 3 shares for every 4 shares held 9 divided by 12 it comes out to be 3 for every 4 this way you will be achieving your target so your bonus ratio will be 3 divided by 4 now the next part is this the new eps we are supposed to find out the new eps then your new mps so guys in this question we are aware of this fact that free float market capitalization is 19.2 so market capitalization is 19.2 how do we calculate market capitalization we just simply multiply the number of outstanding shares which is free float with the market price okay so here in this case it is 19.20 number of outstanding shares okay it comes out to be 75 lakh multiply the same with mps okay you get a figure of this this has to be free float okay so here there is a typo error it should be 12 lakh so 12 lakh should be your free float so mps will become 19.20 divided by 12 lakh which comes out to be 160 okay this way i just calculated this stuff now what should be my after bonus issue my after bonus issue the total number of shares will become 84 lakh in order to maintain the same PE ratio of 25 what should be done the MPS will be 25 multiplied by your new EPS PE ratio formulas guys simple okay I just adjusted the figures nothing beyond that MPS will be equal to your PE ratio multiplied by new EPS so your new EPS will become 4.8 crore divided by 84 lakhs that will be your total number of shares in this case and becomes 5.7143 Sorted guys, clear with this one? Wonderful. Now, I've already received this new EPS here. What would be my new MPS? Again, P ratio, which is 25, multiply the same with new EPS, which is 5.7143. You get a figure of 142 rupees, 142.86. Lastly, your free float market cap after bonus. What will it be? Okay, free float number of shares is now, after bonus issue, it is 84 minus 63. So now 21, lag is the number of shares which is available to the free float normal general public okay that has to be multiplied with your market price which is 142.86 and you get your free float market capitalization after bonus as rupees 30 crores sorted guys this question was a bit technical i know this and definitely so that was the only thing why i made you understand with each and everything on pointed dotted lines so that you guys get the complete clarity with this question as well so I won't say that I will see you in my next presentation and I'm getting so many stuff from my end. Okay. I don't have this thing to tell you today. Usually I speak up about this thing. Okay. I'll see you in the next presentation till then sayonara. But then this is going to be the last presentation and which has just completed. I hope the kind of things which we delivered to you, the kind of understanding with which we made you understand the things, you got the complete clarity with each and every relevant concept. And certainly you guys are about to shine. I am proud of you guys and uh, thank you for pouring all your love. Thank you for all your support. 
uh, without you guys without your entertaining audience okay this wouldn't have been possible for any of us like share and subscribe to our channel and god bless you all take care all the love bye